Hi there. Good afternoon. Good evening and good morning. It is uh, noon here on the East Coast. We are uh, Wednesday, May 20th. We'll be breaking some news with uh, Kyle Malady, the leader of our network and global tech uh, solutions teams here uh, here in a moment. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to uh, call out some things we're doing today to highlight a winning Wednesday. Chris, let's go and take the first slide, if you will, please. Uh, just today, both Open Signal and Root Metrics saving us strong reviews of both our 5G and 4G LTE networks and the performance uh, across that folks, uh, our customers are experiencing. Uh, next up, uh, the next slide, two of our very own folks from the Verizon Business Group, congrats to them, Lori Bonifant and Sarah Marsh, have been named to CRN's 2020 Women of the Channel list. Uh, next up, if we want to roll the video, uh, remember back uh, Thanksgiving? Well, we had this special experience for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade experience that was powered by 5G and uh, AR experience as well. We were a Webby winner and the People's Voice winner in the category of live branded experience for that three, uh, 360 experience there at the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Uh, very cool to see that happening. And speaking of our brand, back to the slide here, Brand Finance has just named that we have overtaken AT&T and we're now the world's most valuable uh, brand value with a uh, with a value of over thirty uh, sixty three billion dollars, taking over AT and T according to that latest report by Brand Finance. Uh, in the battle of the teleco titans, Verizon they say is committed uh, commended for its overall performance, network reliability, network speed, data performance, call and text performance, and finally a nice call out for our leader Hans Vesberg, who was named by Fast Company uh, for a new ranking from SGAR. Uh, seeing uh, he's gone up in a list there, highlighted for the work that uh, he's done for all of us and our teammates around the world uh, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, and he has gone from uh, deep in the list to number four. So thank you, Hans, for everything you do for us. Uh, certainly the V-teamers around the world, thank you for that. And that's why uh, a bit of what we do every single day. So a lot of things there that we're calling out for winning Wednesday. <laughs> But I want to get right to some news uh, with Kyle Malady, who, like I said, leads our network and tech, uh, technology organization. Kyle, what's the latest with the network? Well, let me tell you, but dude, you ripped through those uh, awards really quick, but uh, you got an award for that. <laughs> you ripped through those so fast. Thank you. Um, hey, thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, everybody, all the V-teamers for, uh, for being on today. Uh, special shout out to the the Blue Jeans team, I know you guys were on uh, on yesterday. I look uh, forward, my team and I, to getting to know you guys more and looking at the incredible tech you have and how we can integrate it to more of our products and services here at Verizon. So welcome all. Uh, second, let me just, we do have some, we do have a good bit of news here, Jeremy, on 5G. Um, and we'll talk to Marta in a little bit about uh, one of those news items. But first, let me just give you an overall state of the, the network, if you will. Um, I have to say first uh, shout out again, like last time I was on, thanks to everyone. This is a huge team effort, but our networks continue to perform very well uh, in, this time of, uh, in, th in this time of COVID. If I look at the adjustments we made in uh, Fios, obviously critical uh, that people's homes are wired and they can uh, uh, do their work and their schoolwork and, and entertainment. Uh, the adjustments that the Fios team has made under these trying circumstances have been incredible. We continue to uh, uh, help our customers either if they have problems or install new services. Uh, we do it a little bit differently than we had in the past, uh, but the team is really optimizing there and we're doing, doing very well. So shout out to everyone. And hopefully soon we'll start getting to a little bit more normal <coughs> uh, pace um, as things open up a little bit. The wireless network, our engineers, technicians continue to adjust how, uh, how things are going. Network's holding up fantastic. Uh, our outages are frankly down uh, year over year, and we continue to uh, uh, to shore up areas where we might have a little capacity issues or a, a cell site down or something else. Uh, but uh, we're doing we're doing better than ever on wireless. Uh, we continue for our enterprise customers supporting them. This morning, uh, Tammy just let me know, and I was made aware that we turned up a significant bit of bandwidth for one of our major customers. Uh, like significant, like uh, hundreds and hundreds of gigabits, and uh, they are really, really, uh, they are really happy. So, um, and then finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't shout out to the GTS folks <clears throat> who continue to uh, optimize our uh, solutions for working at home and are also working on ways that uh, will allow us to start dipping our toe and getting, uh, maybe getting back into some of the office 
uh, that uh, Hans and Christy have spoken about over the last couple of days. So from a, from an overall, I don't want to say BAU, it's not BAU, but for the last few months it's been BAU. The teams continue to do well, and thank you so much for finding new ways to work. We continue to move the ball. And having said that, that's kind of the um, the BAU work. I think uh, some good news that I would want to share with everybody is, you know, Hans has been out talking a lot about um, um, uh, the network stats, right? And so what I want to do is I'm going to show you guys uh, an interesting bit of information that uh, our network team puts together on a regular basis here. Um, and what you're seeing, if you can see my screen, every day we take a look at the handoffs <clears throat> that are going across in, in different states in our network. And we read out on this uh, quite a bit. But if you see, this is a histogram, it's gonna go back to March. You can see it's really dark. And when it's dark, that means it's kind of business as usual, you know, the mobility's a lot, people are moving around. As it gets lighter, you can see that people stop moving around. And that means the shelter in place tools are taking, uh, uh, are taking effect. People aren't moving around as much. But we're starting to see over the last couple of weeks, people are starting to move around more and more and more. So, so things start opening up. And things start opening up because the governments are making decisions that it's starting to be safe for us to. You'll see we're planning on, on how we can dip our toe back and come back into the. Uh, into some of these buildings. And um, once again, it all ties back to GTS helping us come up with the tools and things that'll make us safe. So, um, um, so that's, that's kind of the BAU. Now, in terms of 5G, we have a bunch of cool things to talk about today. And let me start with, um, with San Diego. Um, San Diego is gonna be our next ultra wideband market that we announce opening. It's our 35th. Uh, 5G ultra wideband uh, market. It'll be opening uh, on May 28th. And uh, well, it's really exciting. We've been working with San Diego for quite a while. It's great that we can get back into cadence and opening these cities again. And uh, I think with that, we want to we wanna maybe get to Marta a little bit and talk to her about what, uh, what the specifics are there, there on the ground in San Diego. Yeah, let's do that, Colin. Exciting news as we're making uh, that announcement about San Diego going live later this month. Before we get to uh, Marta Lacroix, who is our network, one of our network directors out on the West Coast, I just want to play this quick clip that we have from Todd Price, who is an engineer on her team. Hey, Jeremy, it's Todd Price. I'm here in Kensington, San Diego. We're testing our 5G node to see what the customer can expect when we go live in San Diego. 5G. Looking pretty. <laughs> That's one of the neighborhoods that will get 5G there. You got to love that San Diego weather that the team gets to work in. Uh, uh, but you can see they talked about some of the uh, the speeds that they're getting there. Certainly indicative of what we've seen across the 5G network. I want to bring in Marta now, who, like I said, is our network director out there. Uh, <clears throat> talk to me through this process of working through the pandemic. How much of this work was done prior, and how much of this is uh, kind of happening real time? Yeah, well, let me start with San Diego has been historically challenging to build, build at scale. Um, a few years ago, we started working on a public-private partnership with the city of San Diego, and our state government affairs and business development teams and legal teams have really helped us pave the way to build at scale for 5G. Um, this was one of our first markets that we entered in on the design side with both the fiber and the attach at the same time. We were able to select full locations, you know, that were mutually beneficial to both engineering teams. Um, so all of that happened, you know, over the past few years, a huge effort prior to the pandemic. Um, more recently with the pandemic, we've been having to uh, work closely with the city and partner with the city uh, to get our permits through. So state government affairs, again, and business development, again, helped us with our real estate teams to really work with the city on how we can keep those permits processing. Um, you know, things change in this, in this new environment. So we've had to work with them on different process improvements and initiatives to make sure that we're still getting those permits out. Yeah, and talk about those partnerships that, that made it happen. How important are those, uh, like you said, and, and working with kind of state, local government folks to, to make it all happen? Well, it really helps when you're on a first name basis with the city, um, especially in major cities. It, it, it can be really challenging when all work stops to make sure that we're still getting what we need. 
um, you know, to, to work, to keep going through. So our construction team has really, you know, gotten in creative ways to make sure that we're still working through the pandemic um, and finding, you know, how we can build out certain areas. Um, and even now, you know, as we're preparing for launch, our operations teams and our performance team are finding new ways to test where we previously would have had um, a couple people working together. And now we're finding creative ways to, to do that social distancing to wear a PPE as we splice, test, validate, uh, activate, and, and really make sure that we're ready for launch. That's fun. And I know some of these, the 5G stuff is also, we're going to see some of those upload speeds uh, go over 5G as well now. Uh, one more question for you here, Marta, and then we'll go back to Kyle. Of the projects you've been a part of, you've been with a company for, uh, I think, about a decade now. Where does this rank in level of uh, importance and excitement for you of the things that you've been able to work on? Well, it's 5G, so let's just say right off the bat, it's really exciting. Um, we're excited to finally you know, bring this to launch, but again, it's only the beginning. So we'll be rolling out service in some of our concentrated urban uh, neighborhoods, like um, you know, Mission Valley, uh, Kensington, Linda Vista. Um, we're even gonna light up 5G at one of our retail stores in Mission Valley. So we're really excited to, to bring that experience to San Diego. Um, but ultimately, it's only the beginning we'll be building out throughout the rest of the year and beyond to, to make sure we're really expanding that coverage to all the San Diego areas. So again, it's, it's, it's up there for excitement, and that's because it's 5G, but it's also a great city, and we're really excited to partner with the city. Yeah, thanks uh, so much to the work that you and the, the team have done out there and all of our engineers across the, the footprint uh, making those uh, kind of new technologies and new things come to life. I do appreciate you joining us today. Uh, Kyle, you hear about this. Uh, how how excited are you for all of this? Well, I mean, listen, Jeremy, I mean, it, it just shows the resilience of the team. Um, nobody saw this thing coming. And as Marta said, we the team the team figures out ways to work around whatever roadblocks get in the way and 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 still, you know, complete the mission. And, you know, thank you, Marta, to you and, and the folks on your team, the team, the folks in the West area, the one fiber folks everybody that's uh, gotten us to this point in, in San Diego. And I also like the comment about, you know, we're only starting. We're going to, we keep our shoulder into this thing. We continue to build aggressively. We were talking about it this morning. Uh, once again, we, there's some road, you know, some, some road bumps come along and, and we go over them and we continue to build and stay on track with our strategic plans. And that brings me to my second uh, announcement is um, while we're building, we're still working on the tech for 5G to make it better. And I'm pleased to announce that now we will have um, uh, 5G NR on the uplink uh, in our 5G markets now. Now, what, what does that mean? It probably, to a lot of people, it's a bunch of mumbo jumbo. But what it, what it really does is we're taking the tools, the techniques of, of 5G and adding it to the portion of the communication path from the device to the cell site. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, it means you're going to be able at least 30% faster uh, so you'll be able to get upload speeds in between 25 meg all the way up to max that we see uh, now is to 100 meg. So that's going to be a significant, uh, it's a significant adder and booster to the capabilities of 5G. And once again, it shows we can walk and chew gum at the same time. We continue to deploy and then we walk out, we work on the, uh, on the capabilities. A couple other important points are, um, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be announcing some work with some technology partners. Uh, that allows millimeter wave, which is spectrum that we're using for our 5G ultra wideband, um, to be able to get into homes and businesses. So you can steer the uh, steer the coverage around a little bit. We've been working with a couple partners for a couple years now. It's really good technology that'll help uh, help get the signal and coverage into uh, homes and businesses. So we're really excited about that partnership. And then finally, you know, we've we've talked a lot about the work we're doing in our 5G labs. Um, clearly, in a COVID environment, people are not in uh, not able to come into our labs. Uh, so the teams have quickly pivoted and figured out, um, you know, Nikki and Christian and Sandy Geet and others figured out a way we can open up our 5G labs in a virtual environment. So we can continue to collaborate with people who are on the front edge of using this technology and um, and do it in a way that we can still collaborate well. Uh, and frankly, Blue Jeans is going to be a big part of that. So. Um, so even taking in uh, new capabilities, adding it to the portfolio, and then making it better so our customers, we can, uh, we can work with uh, other people working on 5G so we can bring the, the new and cool things out to the market as soon as possible. So big shout out to the, the team there being, uh, being innovative. Really appreciate that.
That's great. Uh, and again, hats off to the the whole network team. And you also mentioned your the uh, the the technology side of the team working on a lot of things to keep uh, keep all of us connected. Still going uh, well, I'm guessing, right, Kyle? Yep, everything's going well. We continue to work on our strategic initiatives. Hans, you know, Hans is always making sure where we, you know, we wear both sides of the cap here, right? We uh, we continue with our our day to day, making sure we get through the the COVID stuff, making sure everybody's safe and secure, run the business. But you know, we had plans, we had lofty goals for 2020. We need to keep those on track and keep them moving. That's great, uh, Kyle. A couple of questions coming in here, and I don't want to rain on all of our, our the, the parade that we're having today. Uh, talk a little bit about radio frequency and some of the theories that are out there that, of what the that it's how this is making a mess, and then how that's just not true. Yeah, so you're gonna. I mean, you've been seeing it the last few weeks. There's a bunch of uh, conspiracy theories out in the the press about uh, 5G and COVID, and 5G created COVID, and and all these kind of things. What uh, what the V teamers can expect to hear over this coming week, we'll be putting out some uh, uh, some information to everybody uh, to debunk that nonsense. Um, you know, people there's people who who believe it, but um, you know, you look at scientific fact. And um, you know none of this stuff is true, so we'll be putting we'll be putting some information out for the V teamers later this week, so they can understand really uh, what you know what the science is and the preponderance of scientists and everybody who uh, who study this thing that uh, there's no there's no link to this. Good, thank you for that. And uh, just real time feedback from uh, you know Hans Vesberg, our CEO. He he just said on Twitter, uh, great to hear. So he is uh, always listening. All right, Hans, thank you. <laughs> good, good. Kyle, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Marta as well. Congratulations to you and the team. Be excited to see as that market lights up uh, on the 28th. And, and like Kyle said, uh, more to come. So I appreciate you both joining us today. But before we wrap, I want to share a story. Last week, we told you we were going to be streaming, uh, upping stream the National Law Enforcement Memorial uh, Fund uh, candlelight vigil last week. And uh, some of our own V teamers have family members who are honored at that event. I want to share this story with you. My name is Maureen Petrucci Wertling. I'm a central office technician. I have been at Verizon for 35 years. My name is James Cranston. I am a technician for Verizon down at 104 Broad Street, and I have 25 years in the company. Came from two parents that actually were childhood sweethearts, and they got married and they had seven kids. There's five boys and two girls, and there's only actually nine and a half years difference between the oldest and the youngest. Very close. We go to sporting events together, concerts, we've gone on vacations together, and now we have a good time. My youngest brother, Christopher, is a proud father of five children. He lived in Staten Island. He was a detective. He was very instrumental in September 11th. He spent six months on the pile, and he also spent the time in the landfill. Ever since we talked about getting jobs, he always said he wanted to be a cop, and he took the test right away when he was like 16 or 17, and he got called, and he got the job. He died last year in July from 9-11 cancer. He was only 48. He found out in June 2018 that he had colon cancer stage four that had spread to his liver. And the, actually the day that he found out was the day that his son was graduating. He did not even tell his wife or anybody that he was diagnosed that day because he didn't want to ruin his son's graduation. He had a good attitude. I mean, we went to Met opening day last year. You know, he tried to do, but he just got really weak quickly. But he was still positive, still making jokes. You know, he liked to cook. So we uh, cooked, even though he didn't like eating anymore. Verizon's a very supportive company. As my brother was sick, I got a lot of support from fellow union brothers and managers. I'm really good friends with a bunch of managers, and they all were reaching out. We were very disappointed that we weren't going to be able to be together and go to Washington, D.C. and honor my brother. And I, I thought it was amazing that Verizon would pick something on this scale up for people to be able to reef together and honor somebody, whether it be virtual, but at least they were still being honored for their sacrifice and wasn't going to be forgotten. Thanks for the uh, for the family sharing that that with us, and uh, glad we were able to connect folks uh, around the world to to see that um, because it does mean so much to to people. And like uh, Marta was saying, and Kyle was saying, this is uh, why we do what we do. We connect folks when it uh, when they need it the most. So I appreciate uh, being able to share that story. I uh, want to look uh, ahead to some things that are coming up today and this week. Uh, Chris, if you want to go ahead and take the first slide there. Uh, don't forget, tonight uh, is the first installment, or at 4 p.m. today, first installment of Reset Your Mindset. 
for tips on how to take care of your emotional, mental, and physical wellness at home. Uh, important to do that. Uh, also, the next slide, uh, Kyle mentioned it earlier, how our team is looking for uh, new ways to, uh, to figure out the ways to do things. Uh, don't forget about the Build the Future Challenge. Uh, it is still open through Friday, May 22nd. Got a couple of days there, all the details on VZ Web and the street. You know, looking for things like how we might improve the at-home work and uh, uh, life ecosystem in the presence of new health and safety considerations or how we could implement new ways of serving our customers. So get your ideas in there uh, to get that in. Coming up tomorrow, we've got Usher on Pay It Forward Live. And this afternoon or this evening, uh, Hans will be talking uh, on CNBC in the six o'clock hour during Mad Money. So a lot of things going on there. Again, my thanks to Kyle and Marta for joining us today. And uh, thanks to our network teams for uh, doing the new and great things that they are always doing as well as everyone across the company who continues to keep our customers connected. We'll be back with you again tomorrow talking about Visible uh, with Katie and Miguel from the Visible team. Until next time, you're up to speed.